our top story tonight. The growing campaign to change the law after the murder of Sophie Lancaster. If you report things to the police, or perhaps turn up at the hospital injured, it's not really recognised initially that it might be because of how they look. Up. Now, they drunk at least four pints of strong cider and shots of schnapps when they kicked Sophie Lancaster to death for the way she looked. But as 15-year-old Brendan Harris and 16-year-old Ryan Herbert faced life sentences for her murder, a report reveals the amount they drunk wasn't unusual among young people. The study of 15 and 16-year-olds in the Northwest shows 30% binge drink at least once a week. And most disturbing of all was the number who said they're more likely to be involved in violence after drinking. We'll have more on that study coming up. But first, Rob Smith has been speaking to some of Sophie's friends about their growing campaign for a change in the law. One law. They played it at their murdered friend's memorial to make people realise no matter how we look, we're all human. But now, having watched Sophie's murderers laugh at their convictions, Sam Greenwood and his band want to create a safe haven for goths, punks and skaters. A new youth centre and recording studio dedicated to Sophie. I want to honour her memory a bit. People can come share ideas, um, not be ridiculed for the way they dress, but actually be judged on what they do with their life, not, with, not on how they look. Her look was the only reason two drunk teenagers turned killers in this skate park in Baker. Ryan Herbert and Brendan Harris enjoyed attacking anyone who looked different. They'd previous convictions for it, even an assault in the same park. Now an anti-prejudice group established in Sophie's name wants the law on hate crimes to cover not just the likes of ethnicity or gender, but appearance. And it hasn't got a legal standing, so if they report things to the police, or perhaps turn up at the hospital injured, it's not really recognised initially that it might be because of how they look. I think sometimes attacks have been mistaken for fights. A Downing Street petition calling for such recognition to be enshrined in law closes tonight. Sophie's former MP doesn't want that to be the end of it. The police have to have um, whatever they need to be able to deal with crimes of this kind and if we can possibly avoid it in the future we must do so. We can only describe them as kind of animal behaviour, I don't know how else you describe it. Where they do behave like that they won't get away with it and they will be dealt with and we need to get that message out there loud and clear. Someone dropped dead on the One of Sophie's killers rapped about death and running from the police. Drink played its part in making lyrics a reality, but blind ignorance and hatred were present long before booze. Rob Smith, Granada Reports, Baker. Well, the day after Sophie's killers were convicted, a report claims that each year teenagers in the Northwest are drinking an average of 44 bottles of wine or 177 pints of beer. Yeah, one of its authors will be speaking to us after this report from Gamal Fumbler with more of the findings. They're drinking in bars, in the streets and in parks. And as many of us have already guessed, the numbers are on the rise. The reports by Liverpool John Moores University reveal some pretty staggering figures. Around 10,000 15 and 16 year olds were surveyed as part of the study. In a typical class of 10, more than eight of them say they drink alcohol. Around five out of 10, that's around half of them, drink at least once a week. For trading standards, the message is clear. One of the ways is to educate the public, and um, people who are over 18, not to purchase alcohol for these children. Uh, in many ways, we see that this causes the antisocial behaviour, and the report, report actually states that uh, children who buy alcohol in this way normally are the binge drinkers and often the ones who are drinking in the public places. The study goes on, just over three out of every ten teenager asked admitted buying their own alcohol and a similar number say they binge drink weekly. And of course it's this that has contributed to the rise in violence on our streets. Two out of ten teenagers between the ages of 15 and 16 admitted being involved in violence after drinking. For the drinks industry it's everyone's responsibility to tackle the problem. In 2006, for example, throughout the whole of the UK, only 10 children were prosecuted for trying to buy alcohol and a further 13 were given police cautions. That is just not enough. It's not nowhere near enough. So, yeah, the drinks industry needs to be doing more, but so do the police, so do parents and the education system.
The report, which has been backed by Trading Standards and the Department of Health, serves as a stark reminder that underage drinking is a real problem that doesn't seem to be going away. Thanks, Gamal. Well, Professor Mark Bellis is co-author of that report. He joined us earlier and we began by asking him why violence linked to drinking seems to be getting so much worse. Well, I think one of the things that's come out of this survey is just how strong the relationship is between the way people are drinking, young people. They're binge drinking a lot and those who are binge drinking a lot are much more likely to be involved in alcohol-related violence. People binge drinking three times a week are five times more likely to have been involved in alcohol-related violence, even by the ages of 15 and 16. But why does drinking alcohol necessarily make you violent? Well, it doesn't necessarily make people violent, but unfortunately it, it's a catalyst often. So a variety of things in a young people's life can tend them towards violent actions. But often drinking is one of those things that makes people think they don't care about the consequences. They may feel that they're not worried for their own sake. And they're less likely to figure out at that time other ways out of a violent situation. When we do stories like this, Professor, a lot of people email in and say, well, it's a lack of discipline from parents. This is why the kids are out of control and getting hold of the alcohol. Is it that simple? Parents have a big role to play. I mean, on, on a Friday night, there's going to be a lot of parents drinking quite a lot at home and not necessarily thinking about the example that they're setting for their children. But they are doing something which is, in effect, educating them in a way of drinking. At the same time, parents need to be talking to the children, understanding what they're drinking, the damages associated with that, and making sure that conversation's going on so they learn the right ways of drinking if they're going to drink at all. And is the alcohol just too easily accessible? Well, I think this is the real problem. It's too easy for young people still to get alcohol, and it's too cheap. And what that means is, for a relatively small proportion of a young person's pocket money, they can get drunk two or three times in a week. It's still relatively easy for them to buy that alcohol, but it isn't that easy for them to do other things. For instance, go to a sports game, engage in sports or a hobby, and we've got to address that balance so that the more beneficial things are the easier things to do. What about the long-term health implications of starting to drink so young? Well, what we're seeing at the moment is, is people who have alcohol, higher levels of alcohol consumption as young people, going on to be more likely to have alcohol-related dependency later on in life. And we're seeing the age at which things like alcohol-related liver disease come down. So we're seeing people much younger than we did in the past develop major long-term problems as a result of alcohol. And that's mainly because they've started drinking very young in life and drinking a lot of alcohol at that time. Professor, thank you.